Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and this week I've been driving the 2023 Mazda MX-5 RF Club. Up front is a 2.0 liter inline four down below is a six speed manual transmission. Now I'm super excited to be making this video because I have spent the last actually eight days with this Miata and I love it. I have a lot to share with you guys. A lot of good, a couple bad things. So we'll get into the nitty gritty here in a second. But if you would like to share your vehicle with me, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form, takes under a minute to fill out. I come out to you and you would get a video of your car, just like the one you're watching now of this Miata RF. But let's get back to that two liter under the hood, making 181 horsepower. Well, it's a pretty solid horsepower number for the type of vehicle that this is and you won't really feel a horsepower deficit while driving now there's always going to be those horsepower junkies that say miatas are severely underpowered but for any sane individual it's actually a pretty healthy amount and i have had a blast zipping around town in my little cherry red miata now like i said paired to it is a six speed manual now you can find these with a six speed automatic i drove one of those last fall down in texas so if you'd like more info i have a full video on that but this six speed has been absolutely great really nice and light clutch nice and light throw however i really treat this like a four speed first second third and fourth gear are very very useful sixth gear i use for cruising when i want to get the best miles per gallon possible and fifth gear is probably the least utilized gear in the history of man over the last eight days that i've had this car i think i've sat in fifth gear maybe once maybe twice if i'm going from fourth to fifth you might as well chuck it into sixth so fifth gear really doesn't have much of a purpose in this car that being said the first four gears are pretty tight ratio and what i find myself doing a lot of times is going from sixth down into third when i want to accelerate because the last couple of gears are kind of all meshed together. Last but not least, of course, the Miata is rear wheel drive. And it does get a limited slip differential. Fuel economy, real world fuel economy. Over the 280 some miles I've done in this car, I've gotten an average of 28.5 miles to the gallon, which isn't bad in any means it's also not super stellar for it being only a two liter but fuel economy in mazda sports cars has never really been their forte how does it feel to actually drive the miata there's nothing like it and there's really nothing truly better at the price point or at the stature. The controls are direct. The steering is precise. There's not a whole lot of body roll. It is a driving machine and it reminds you of that every single chance it gets. And it puts just the dumbest, biggest, stupidest smile on my face every time I turn the key and get in and go. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have three gauges. Off to the left, this is actually a digital gauge, so this can be swapped around to show a couple different info items that you might want, as well as the temperature is found up at the top, and if you hit this little stick, it'll actually zoom in on the temperature to make sure that you're not going over if you do bring this to the track, or if you're doing a lot of aggressive driving, especially in the summer, it's a good idea to keep a more precise eye on your temperature. In the center, we get the center mounted tachometer, which is beautiful. All sports cars should have center mounted tachs, and the Miata definitely complies with that. And then off to the right, I have my speedometer. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my volume, skip track info, and voice commands as well as my phone options. And off to the right, I have my cruise control options. I wish that this car got the buttons found in the Mazda 3 where they stick out more. These are concave, which can sometimes be a little bit annoying to hit, and several times I've accidentally hit the voice command when all I wanted to do was move the volume up. The overall steering wheel feels great. It is a nice taut leather and I pleasantly enjoy it, but it's nothing really to write home about. Off to the left, I do have a climate control vent. I have my traction control off, my lane keep assist off, and then down below we have the hood and trunk release. Moving out of the door, first of all, up top, you do get a little bit of the exterior color in the interior. 
This is one of the few cars on sale today where you actually get that feature. But down below, we do have our power mirrors, power locks, and power windows. Moving into the center, we do get a little touchscreen infotainment system. Now it's a touchscreen until you start moving, and then you have to use the dial that we'll talk about a little bit later on. I'm not a huge fan of the screen, couple of things. First of all, it does have wireless Apple CarPlay, but it's been so incredibly glitchy in either not picking up my phone when it's directly in front of it, or it just dropped my phone randomly while I was trying to use the navigation. So that was fun. So I ended up just using the wired CarPlay instead of the wireless because it was more reliable. This is also Mazda's older system. I call this the Red Bubble system that debuted in 2016, and they're still using it here in the 2023 Miata. That being said, the rest of the screen is fine, except also, okay, the backup camera is pretty terrible. It's just so low quality, and I get it, this is a low car, lightweight car, but a nicer camera wouldn't add that much weight or cost to it. So why not? This camera is atrocious. So moving beyond that, that's not really why you buy a Miata. Down below, I do have two climate control vents, a round one and a rectangular one, as well as the hazard switch. And then I have my climate controls. Very simple, I don't get dual zone, but there's only about three cubic feet of space in here, so not that big of a deal. I have temperature off to left, fan speed in the middle, where to send it off to the right. Then we do have some more interesting buttons down below. So off to the left, we have the power top options. This is the RF, which is short for retractable fastback. And at the push of this button, you can put the top up and down. This is the top operation, which it looks really, really cool. And I feel as though it's almost like a transformer. The retractable fastback has a lot of good qualities to it. It cuts down the road noise significantly over the cloth top. It's way easier, it's power. You don't have to do anything but hit a button and you can open and close it up to six miles an hour. However, not that I would know, but sources have told me that there's a module you can buy online that would plug in behind the seats and you can raise that to 30 miles an hour where it will go up and down. Don't do that. Then off to the right of that button, we do have our heated seat options and we have our SD card reader for the navigation and two USB-A outlets. Then we move on to the shifter. I think the shifter looks great, feels great, functions great, and overall is a slam diggity dunk. Off to the right, we do have the handbrake, and yes, this is in the down position. It always fools me thinking that it's still engaged. And then down below, we have the selectors for that screen for when you are moving and you can't use the touch screen, you can actually use this, which is really, really nice. I've always praised Mazda for their controls, and it's no different here in the MX-5 RF. Then we do get a little cubby, not a whole lot of space in there, but something. And then over my right shoulder, I have cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test and of course it fails but we're not done with the cup holders because they are removable and so back over my shoulder they're not helpful at all but you could actually pop one of them out and place it over where the passenger's knees would be so if you're driving alone and you want an easily accessible cup holder you can move it to that location and all will be right in the world which i have done quite a bit in this car and it actually does fit a full 64 ounce cup from a fast food place so don't worry that it doesn't fit the big friggin bottle i started that as a joke and people take it really really seriously don't worry about the big friggin bottle however the mx5 actually does not have a glove box so the only interior storage is off behind my shoulder behind those cup holders that are removable and so it's fine it's a little cubby i use it quite a bit however if you have anything in the cup holders in front of it you can't really access it which is kind of a pain also you can lock this when the top is down However, Mazda has since updated their keys, so you have to actually disassemble your key fob if you want to lock this with a physical key. There's no other way to lock it, so, you know, have fun rebuilding your key fob anytime you want to walk away with the top down. However, this car does get the Recaro seats, which are very comfortable. They fit big guys like me. And they have a Bose speaker in the headrest, which is an absolute joy for when the top is down. 
Overall, these Recaro seats are 10 out of 10s. However, we don't have any back seats, so we'll talk about the rear trunk space. It's decent. Even with the retractable fastback, you actually get an okay amount of trunk space. The really big issue is the opening. So if you have any like hard suitcases, it's going to be hard to fit in there. But my equipment case fits in there fine. So I guess at the end of the day, it's not horrendous, but it's what I would expect out of a Miata. Now we have to talk about the looks. And the first thing everyone says is look at that color. This is finished in soul red metallic and it is beautiful. It's a several stage paint from Mazda. They actually taught the robots in the facility to move in the same way that one of their master painters moved. They actually motion captured his arm as he painted a car and now the robots follow that same path, which I think is such a cool and unique way of painting a vehicle. It really is a true work of art. And this color just has so many moods to it. When it's overcast and rainy, it feels sad and it gets deep and then when it's sunny it beams out and it's happy and filled with joy mazda really moves emotion just through a paint color and that is very very impressive everyone who has seen this car or who i've picked up in this car has loved the paint color and i don't blame them my only hesitation with it is that it is very very thin because they had to apply so many layers to get that color they couldn't spray them very thick. So if you buy a soul red vehicle, I highly recommend that you do, but I also highly recommend that you get it professionally, either vinyl wrapped with like a clear bra type expel type wrap or some other paint protection. This is also outfitted with the BBS wheels, which I think look fantastic, but it does come with the Brembo brakes as well. They are very good. They stop the car really well. However, they are incredibly squeaky all the time so if you plan on getting the bbs brembo recaro package which i highly do recommend just know that your brakes are going to be very very squeaky because they are more performance oriented and that's just kind of the way the cookie crumbles but with all of that being said let's get on to my final thoughts what do i think having driven the rf miata for the last eight days well, first of all, I'm extremely privileged to have had this for an extra day. The previous Volvo that I had actually got a check engine light, and so they were able to give me this car just a day earlier, and I am eternally grateful for that. There are some big drawbacks to the Miata. Obviously, spatially, this is a very small automobile. I tried to take my friend to an ATM and it did not pan out very well. She had to stand up and open the door. So drive throughs ATMs, a little bit of a struggle. You are pretty low. So par for the course when it comes to size. The glove box or lack thereof is pretty much useless. The trunk ain't great. I am a little bit sardined in here, but that's what you sign up for. The tech also sucks. The centered infotainment screen is by far the worst part of this car. But again, that's not really why you buy a Miata. If you want a cutting edge vehicle, look elsewhere. The Miata is very good at sticking to its roots. And that's been the biggest joy that I've had throughout my time with it. I'd like to tell you a story now, if I may. Back in 2020, there was this little pandy wandy pandemic. And during that time, I got really bored. I wanted a car, a fun car that I could drive around, but since there was a pandemic on, I didn't wanna drive with many people. I didn't wanna get sick. I didn't know what it was. And so I got sent a link to a Craigslist ad for a 1993 Mazda Miata. And while mowing the lawn, I dropped everything, drove six hours to St. Louis, thanks with my friend Tyler, to go purchase that Miata. And I owned that car for three months. Unfortunately, I needed something more practical as the winter was coming, so I sold it to buy my Mazda 3. But while I had that Miata, I don't know if there was a single day I drove with the top up. It was a blast. And so to celebrate my new fun car, my friend Alex and I hopped in our little manual Mazdas and went for a drive. And we ended up randomly at this little small town ice cream spot. And the next year, I had already sold my Miata, but I still had my RX-7. So in honor of that drive we took the year before, we did the same drive. And in 2022, 
we did that same drive again. But at the end of 2022, I sold my Mazda RX-7 and it put our little ritual in jeopardy. But fortunately, Mazda corporate came through and they sent me this car and I was able to continue that tradition with one of my best friends. So now for four years running, we've driven manual Mazdas out into the middle of nowhere to a random little ice cream spot. And the reason I tell that story is not to be cute and cuddly, although that is a pretty cute and cuddly story. The reason I say that is because this car feels very traditional. It sticks to what it's very good at and what the Miata has been good at for the last three decades. It's still light and nimble. It hasn't lost a single ounce of its personality. Yeah, it's a little bit more mature than it used to be. My 93 Miata, I had to put a shower curtain over it anytime it rained because the top would leak so bad. This has a power folding top. This has an actual salary. This car has a wardrobe that isn't just outcast t-shirts and the free t-shirts you get for doing 5Ks. This actually has an adult wardrobe. It's presentable, it's mature, but the personality is still there. It's still goofy. It still tells the same jokes every time you see them. And there's something charming about that. There's a familiarity that comes with this car. And that is what has been so special. At the end of the day, the Mazda Miata is not a perfect car. On paper, in theory, it has a lot of drawbacks. But when driving it, I can't think of any other vehicle that's better. And that is what makes this car so special to me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Mazda drive shop and of course the midwestern automotive media association for making this video possible mazda if you're watching send more of these my way this has been an absolutely joyful week and that is all thanks to the mx5 rf club but i hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to rate the video comment on the video and subscribe if you really liked it take care guys